Hello, all of you card beans out there, and welcome to the stream. I am Razim, and this is TCG Card Shop Simulator. And we are currently using the TF Talkies, so you guys can TF me live here on stream. But, uh, they've released an update that apparently has some new products we can get. Uh, which apparently these are all actually from, uh, an actual developer. Which is rather neat. So yeah, we're gonna go, we're gonna be working towards unlocking these. We also have the standard stuff still to unlock, but for now, I think the first thing I need, okay, I did pay the bills. Uh, as I, uh, by the way, I did play this a little bit off stream because I wanted to, and <laughs> ye. I didn't open any packs, so I only ran the store and, you know, got the cards. Or I only sold stuff and bought new product and whatnot. Didn't do anything actually advancing the game. But, let's see here. Alright, we can afford this, so let's do it. Ooh. Let's see how this one works. System gate number one, system gate number two, huh? Well, apparently these are board games and there's only two in a box. Woo! Board games. Board games. Yes, board games. I mean, addiction. <laughs> I am really happy. I, I am really happy for them that they're getting these uh, partnerships, though. Because, yeah, only selling their Tetramon stuff would get so dull so fast. So it's nice to see that they're expanding. You were going to say? Yeah. Oh, I was about saying, it's nice to see that the backers have actually got a tangible reward from this game. Like, oh, you, at this level, you're now a plushie. Or at this level, you're a card. Uh, I don't think that's a thing. Yes, it is. One of the plushies on the list is a, as a YouTube streamer, quite well known. Well, yes, but there is literally nobody else in there. So that is probably a specific thing only for them. Because I've seen things like that, but that does not mean it's open to everybody. Yeah. Money talk, sadly. Hey, Raharu. You headed off to bed. I hope you sleep well. <laughs> Much EP. And there's your board game. <laughs> yep, sold the first one. Though I am very concerned about keeping them stocked. Considering the fact that uh, only three of them can go on the shelf at a time. <laughs> The current hotness sells. Uh, speaking of, wow. Yeah! Thank you! <laughs> By all means, wow. come again! 600 bangers. 
here's a free pack of card sleeves for you, sir. Thank you. Yeah, my restocker is incredibly slow. So I kind of anticipate some problems from that. All these wonderful people buying all of my stuff. Including hey, all like of one kind of playmat. Eh, I don't care God. who it's sold to as long as I get money. Uh, my, my fr there's one of the other board games. My friend did that. Uh, bought two playmats for 250 bucks when they came into the store. After they were the only two playmats and one was actually in use uh, where customers were playing on it. So that's how we got a discount on the second one. Umburo is a very popular set. Yeah. I might at some point here soon finally get a second cashier and actually hire somebody else, but I'm still debating. Considering how slow the normal speed one is for restocking, I'm not sure I want to know how slow somebody actually ringing customers out is going to be. Okay, Shawnee, we're just gonna go ahead and put this in the bag. All right, and there, and all right. Oh, now you got a second item. Move it on over. Oh, that's a third item. I'll get it in there eventually, I, I swear. <laughs> well, on the plus side, he is keeping these uh, board games pretty well stocked. Well, it's pretty hard to mess that up when there's only three on a shelf. It's like, one, two, oh, I lost my count. One. <laughs> Well, it's more about him uh, moving so slow from getting the box from the back and moving it out to the shelf and stuff. So much later that the old narrator got tired of waiting and they had to hire a new one. They made it past the sprayer. I'm impressed. Must be running low. No, it's just the same situation as all the rest. They uh, came in shortly after somebody else and they hadn't recharged yet. Or of stinkers. You will join us. I did appreciate running this off stream last night because it gave me the opportunity to uh, actually clean out some of my low value cards. <laughs> Instead of just, you know, keeping to putting out really expensive ones. That's where your, your bulk boxes come in really handy. Yeah, but I can only do up to... Uh, I, I can only do up to one dollar of value for the bulk boxes. Maybe there's an upgrade for it later down the road. I there might be. I am really hoping that they're going to release say or put out an update or something. 
I'm pretty sure there isn't an upgrade for it. I'm pretty sure that it is simply the matter of you cannot do it right now. There's an update for Seven Days to Die at the moment. It's experimental, so it'll be live soon. Wait, someone's stealing an entire box of product. Oh, wait, it's your... Yeah. Hey. My employee. Our sidekick. Uh, give me one moment. No problem. Real life happens. Let's see, what is chat? Okay. I was just replying to Conrad and checking something he sent me real quick. You know, art manager and all that. Yeah, but you're still a scammer. Apparently. Oh yeah, that. God. <laughs> yeah, let's not forget I am scum of the earth for uh, helping out artists. <laughs> <laughs> the worst. Truly despicable. Not a single redeeming quality to me. Except being cute, you're definitely cute. Oh no, definitely not. All well, the power of the cards say otherwise. Yeah, but that only applies for that stream. Alright. Uh, he's tired. He got up really early to take his brother to the doctor and stuff. Which, by the way, guys, um, we are still running that fundraiser to help out Conrad and his brother. Uh, his brother's got tonsillitis. He needs to get surgery done for it. And they need help. So the tip goal is set up. If you guys can help out, please do so. Or you can commission them. Uh, you can get a 3D model done. You can get your character as a plush to drop on me. You can get it done as a duck to throw at me. Uh, for those, just message me on Discord or Telegram. Um, the ducks are 40, the plushes are 100. Oh yeah, Merle, there, there was somebody that commented on one of our, uh, one of the journals I made about commissions being open. 
I was just like, you are the scum of the earth, rawr. Because I apparently have uh, juked these people into doing this. I mean, I kind of see what they're coming from. Like, what do you mean? Maybe Duke he thinks people. I mean, he maybe think you're one of those people who are like, "I'll pay you an exposure to get free stuff." Yeah. You know? I wish I only That's paid them an. Ex I wish I paid them an exposure. God, if I had the. Like this at this is point. Why is important. Yeah. At this point, Conrad owes me like four or five models fully done with all the help I've given him. <laughs> and some uppies. Yeah. They, uh... <sighs> Not to mention, now I'm trying to help Conrad actually learn English. Oh, good luck with oh. that. English is hard. He well, wants... We have college classes on English. Yeah. He wants to have contact with, you know, the commissioners and such, which is like, that's fine? Except that... The translator he used, you know, Google Translate, it doesn't take into account nuance in a language. It is just strictly, this word translates to this. Most directly. And then you get sentences that sound accusatory or hostile when it's like, no, that's not the intention behind it. It is something that I have to deal with him quite often, is he comes across very hostile sometimes, and it's like, I know it's because the translator is messing, is losing the nuance. I don't have specific uh, examples in mind right now, but... It's like when you say, that is the bomb. Not that, um, it's more just like word choice. Um, and a lot of it is like... Th things more along the lines of like, demanding that you do something now. As opposed to a, hey, could you check this out? Ah, uh, I see. Yeah. The tone of the... The tone of the message, yeah. Hey yeah. there, Kazu. And it's like, I would love to give him access to talking to commissioners, but it always turns out bad because they don't... They, they don't appreciate the fact that he is doing his best with a translator rather than, you know... Yeah, well, he gets I've extra hugs. Just, I've I've commissioned artists that use uh translators and it is uh a little rough to say the oh, least. Oh yeah. It's very rough. And it can oftentimes lead to miscommunications. Hey, if that's the best you can do, then you gotta work with what you have. Yeah. But that's why I'm like, hey, just just please let me handle the communication. I understand what you're working with. They don't always care. <laughs> As evidenced by several of the people that... Uh, were with his old manager before I was before he asked me to help him out with this. 
Which, again, for anybody that may watch this and be like, <laughs> art manager, what? You dupe people into this? No. He asked me and begged me to do it. <laughs> I, I, I definitely uh, never foresaw myself doing this for artists before. <laughs> and for the record as well, because I don't mind sharing this, he insists on me having... 20% of the profits. I don't take it. Most of the time I wind up sending him the full amount, but if I if he does push it, I take 10% and I'm just like, okay, just put the other 10% towards a future commission for me. We'll worry about it later. But the 20% was his idea. Was what he wanted me to take. Not what I want to take. It's like, dude, all I'm doing is sending out invoices and copying things over. You are doing far more of this work. Far more of the talent is with you. Sounds like you're doing something really nice. happy one of the artists that I'm following is uh, safe from the rocket attack. Oh, jeez. Yeah, thank goodness. Yeah, it's like I couldn't get hold of him for two days, and I'm like, uh, 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 and he just messaged me, and it's like, yes, I'm fine. It's like, oh, thank goodness. Like, welcome to life in Israel. Yay. How are you there, Kazu? Alright, let's finish up this day. shouldn't put yourself down over, you know, what you do. You do a lot, Zim. When I say you that... You gotta interpret. When, when I what? say things like that, it's not so much me putting myself down. It is, I feel that if I'm going to be paid, I'm going to be paid what I feel is a fair amount. And when they're doing, you know, 90 to 95% of the work... They deserve 90 to 95% of the pay. Yeah, fair enough, then. But, you know, you still do, you still do stuff. Oh, I know. You, you are the, you are an important intermediary. Yeah, it, it's, I, I just wanted to clarify that it's not me, you know, saying, I'm bad. No, it's just... I am not doing as much of the work as they are. Just make sure you take care of yourself. That would be easier if Rex were awake. <laughs> I'm regretting turning down the snack earlier. I wasn't <laughs> expecting him to fall asleep. If Rex was awake, I would have uh, suggested we try out the Hell and Tail. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> I am still not set up for that, unfortunately. Fair enough. But, uh... We were going to do La Mulana tonight with him and Raijin while I was doing this game, but uh, he also asked, he offered to do a snack thing for me earlier, and I was like, no, I'm okay right now, and now I'm feeling the hunger, and it's like, dang it, now he's asleep. I have regrets. I have many regrets. Good night, Ido. Good night, Ido. Ido, cute. So this bag of chips would be perfect for you then. Got it. Ah, 
I can make food for myself. I just don't want to go do it right now. And I'm not that hungry. Mode. Here, Sam, do you want an egg in these trying times? Egg I always want an egg. Egg Doesn't matter if the times are trying or not, I want egg. Egg The egg is good. Some nice value cards. These will help out with finances. getting a lot of bulk box uh, cards and a lot of cards that are like less than five dollars that aren't even worth putting out but I also don't want 10,000 of them in my binder just because it bugs me They seriously need to release a binder or something for low-cost cards. Put out the really high-value cards on the stands and just have a binder of all the others. Hey there, Seda! How are you this evening? Say to keep. Uh, there are bulk boxes done, Brian, but they only go up to a dollar. So for the massive amount of cards that I have that are between a dollar and five dollars in value. I don't have any options outside of these, and each of these can only hold one card. It's not worth it to put out a $3 card. Now, 10 plus? Absolutely. But like, you can see a lot of these cards are practically valueless. They're just taking up space that could be better served going for other products. Instead of me trying to move them. Not to mention it's tedious putting these out. I don't mind the cards that are worth $10 and up. I just think that there should be a uh, bulk box for one uh, for one to five dollars and a bulk box for five to ten. But oh well, maybe eventually we'll get it. Because any shop that dedicates this much floor space to just single cards that are worth that little, yeah, that's, that's a waste of floor space. 
It'd be better to put out play tables. What you been up to today there, Seda? Doing the arts. Chatting in factory. Ah. Did you stream tonight? I'm bad at keeping track of people's schedules. Hell, I'm bad at keeping track of my own schedule. happens. Nice. I really hope your stream went well. And for those that uh, don't know, somehow, in my community at least, Seda is a streamer as well. You all should go check him out at twitch.tv slash Seda BDA. He tends to have some very lovely conversations. Uh, as he describes himself, he is a nice cup of tea. Yeah, a cutie. Yes, very cute. And for those of you that have seen my uh, satisfactory playthroughs, well, if you want to see somebody that actually has some resemblance of an idea of what they're doing, go check him out. Steadfast loyalty is greatly appreciated. Lightpaw just resubscribed for 19 months. Lightpaw! Thank you so much for that... Oh! For subscribing for six months in advance. Thank you. And your 19 months of support. Monthly channel chat? Channel discussion? I am unfamiliar with this. It will have a nice cup of tea before the EPs get them. Don't you say that? Nice blankie and a soft pillow. Oh, I hope that doesn't hurt you there, Light Paw. Never support the channel if you can't afford it. You guys just coming by and hanging out with me is a huge value. Yes, well, welcome to Nerd Chat, Lightpaw. You, you you can sit in the corner with the rest of us magic geeks. I mean, heck, I'm making a raccoon and bear deck that I'm going to call Rack and Cheese. The 
prices of fast food light paw that's just going to save you more money than you just spent <laughs> I mean, when you Fair. can compare the prices from two years ago. Ugh. Yeah. Fair enough, Light Paw. Like, McDonald's wants what for a McDouble? Are you on meth? Did you just say, have you gone meth? Yes. Okay, just wanted to make sure I heard that right. Alright. You know, when they, they brag that you know, it's like, oh, you can get a delicious McDouble for only three twenty nine. You're like, uh, this used to be on your value menu for 99 cents. <laughs> Remember when you had a dollar menu? Remember? Pepperidge Farm does. What do you mean? Pepperidge Farm hasn't had a dollar anything for ever. They yeah, charge that, right up there with the, everybody else. That was the joke, as, you know, Pepperidge Farm remembers, because, you know, oh, that, that was their old commercial. It's like, oh, you remember when Pepperidge Farm remembers. now it's just a meme which most people have forgotten because well you know there's not much pepperidge farm anything out there i mean it's like mccain you know instant cakes they're just nasty ah so i have to place these orders per app i see Ugh. that is annoying Alright, let's move this over here, move that there, move this here, bring in my new shelf, put that in the middle because I think it'll look nicest that way. Maybe not, but that's what I'm doing anyways. Bloodface! Hello, Bloodface! a dart. Good evening. But, hold on, did you just call him Buttface? Blep. Blep. Oh, okay. I'm like, what the heck? <laughs> so, anyways, hi. <laughs> Hello. Yeah, I, I I figured it'd be easier for me to pop into voice and explain than try to type it out because I'm very EP. That's fair. Hey, Popper. Uh, but yeah, no, I, I had my second um state of the testing facility discussion. Ah. Because, uh, uh, in short, I figured... Y you know how the content creation cycle goes, where you kind of go through those periods of, like, things going great, and then you're kind of, like, stagnating a touch? Yes. I was definitely kind of going through one of those over the summer, and I decided, you know what, hey, let's be open and upfront about it. You know... For me, try to self-identify what are the issues that I'm running into as a content creator. What should I be working towards? Focus things down because you know, you know there can be, you know, dozens of different things you could be doing to improve your channel. Let's focus down on certain issues and like build it up step by step. So I kind of had that like kind of initial corrective discussion last last month, and I'm attempting to make a habit of it of you know having that discussion at the first tuesday of every month just to be like you know hey how did i do from the previous month where are things at now what i'm going to be working on and kind of continue building that momentum there just so it's you know more of a engine to keep on self-improving hmm that's fair i rather like that idea don't think i do was it myself but <laughs> go ahead and this one had a hundred percent more slideshow. Yeah, that's kind of why I wouldn't do it myself. Hey, look, the first one I just had like a, a random image uh, that I took, and then I just had Clip Studio open in the background. I was just doing little doodles on top. 
But this one, I'm like, you know what? Let's put together a bit more of a PowerPoint just so I can stay more on topic as opposed to jumping around and then be like, well, I need to go back and restart this train of thought. So in other words, you subjected your viewers to death by PowerPoint? Look, if I wanted to do death by PowerPoint, I'd have a PowerPoint up there where I'd have a Sammy button that would trigger a two second ad every 10 seconds. Oh my god. <laughs> That'd be more death by ad with PowerPoint as opposed to a death by PowerPoint, but we could give a death by PowerPoint. Um if I want to do death by PowerPoint, I'd probably would do a I'd probably do a presentation on why Abby's so cute. I think that would take me a good twenty four hours. Full, with full methodology and um, results and discussion. And at least 69 figures. There'd of be course. colorful illustrations? It would, it would be 621 slides long. It wants puppy uppies. I mean, that would be an arm workout for anyone. Darts like 60 pounds. You can't just casually give the puppy uppies. Oh, uh, Light Paw, it's AVI. AV eating wolf. Dumb Brian, can I get a shout out for him, please? I mean, I could also give him a shout out. Oh, I yeah. have that power. I keep forgetting you're a mod for some reason. So do I. <laughs> well, at least I'm not alone then. I like that for some reason. Zeta, what did you do? Uh, I... Apparently, I'm of good enough standing where they just handed me a sword and they trust me not to stab people with it. Well, so they trust you with a sword, not with a with a beaker full of science. Thank you, Dan Brian. See, I need to start my presentation on why you should trust me with a beaker of science. I have this lab coat, so it makes me official. Oh, yes, yes, indeed. Absolutely official. In every imaginable possibility. Possibilities. There. Yeah. No. I have finally oh, yeah, completed so this shelving setup. I, I organize them all by the types. Time to knock everything down like a cat. But but you are a dog. But I must personally inspect each of these packs. Oh, oh, okay. For inspection. I did also get turned into a cat today, so you know there's a, you know a little bit of lingering stuff in there. Ah, uh, that's fair. Um. But yeah, no, so I had that discussion. It was about an hour. I then did a Pokeball tier list. Um, Moonball was at the top. Uh, naturally, of course. Because it is peak Pokeball design. Fight me. Did you say fight you or bite you? Uh, I said fight, but I mean... <laughs> oh, oh. If you bite me, do I turn into a red panda? Uh, at this point, uh, possibly, it's really more of just a roll of the dice. Fair enough. I, look, I, look, it it depends on what's in the roll of the dice because, like, I haven't been a panda yet. Yeah, but if there's two red pandas, won't that be just pandemonium? Hmm. Valid point. 
Have, have you seen the Fennec yet, uh, Seda? I have seen the Fennec. Ah. Uh, I'm really um, happy and also, that um, came out. Merle, I put fastball in B tier. Which, before you grab the pitchfork, fastball was... Let's see, that would have been... Two, seven... Number nine on the list. So it is in B tier, but it's in the top ten. I never used fastballs myself, so... I mean, they're quite rare to get, in, considering compared to all the apricorn balls as well. Like, they're trying to get a hold of them is um difficult. Better in Gen 9, but ugh, not as easy as Gen 2 and 4. But yeah, then after that, I switched over to Satisfactory. Got another, like... 14 gigawatts of power online. 14 gigawatts! Why? I thought you weren't even using all of that. I'm not using any of it right now. We have like 114,000 megawatts. It's it's glorious. And the plant's not even at 40% capacity. And what are you going to use it all for? To make stuff. <laughs> Knitting to take over the world. Look, I need unlimited power. Well, I guess you do have a mouse form now. Unlimited Seda. Thankfully, a lot of the factor relies on uh, copper pipes. I don't think I'm getting through that. At least we can all agree that, thank goodness, that factory games don't require uh, belts to be powered by electricity. Oh my know, goodness, right? yes. That is honestly the... my one complaint about uh, the Create mod for Minecraft. Is that for some <laughs> reason they decided that conveyor belts had to be powered. It's, it's like universally accepted in every automation game in the world that you don't make conveyor belts have power for whatever reason. Well, probably because most of the time, uh, with a lot of them, the power that would just, uh, that would be required for running those belts could be easily achieved by the machine that's feeding out onto them. Yeah. <laughs> It's not like it takes much to run a conveyor. Yep, you... and... And ultimately, at the end of the day, like, you do have a certain balance of... You know, this is gameplay, and then this is a chore, and I think, you know, requiring your conveyor belts to be powered is just starts turning into a chore. Yeah. The only yeah, there's not even many ways that would like be accurately implemented. Like the best way you could do is add like lightning rod style stuff at like certain checkpoints of the conveyor belt that it connects to to give it power, but that's like the best I could even think of think even think about making another thing. Hey there, Meathy. But like especially in games like Satisfactory where the conveyor belts go directly from one machine to another. Yeah. <laughs> or whatever they're going into. But they're coming out of a machine. They could easily be... The, the machine itself could easily take care of that. Well, the thing is, that most automation games will give you conveyor belts like a good few chunks of hours before you even get power they just kind of work <laughs> yeah like factorio i will say uh yeah. doesn't make a whole lot of sense on how their conveyors run but i don't care because good god needing to provide power for them would just be a chore if you had to have all conveyor belts powered by a power pole Especially early game. 
the spaghetti of your factory would increase so exponentially. At that point, like in the early game, you're trying not to lose people by bogging them down with, you know, oh, well, hey, everything needs to be powered. And then it's like, well, uh, can I build a factory? No, everything needs to be powered. Power it's needs like... power. Yeah, because even, even stuff like Hyanodons, which is like supposed to be the, uh, it is not even supposed to, it is like the hardest like pack out there even they don't require you to power the conveyor belts with electricity and that's supposed to be the most realistic mod pack kind of out there oh yes lightning i am very much looking forward to that though whether i actually get into it or not i don't know and honestly, I will probably wind up waiting a little bit before I touch it for some of the mods to update. For which I... one? Factorio. Oh yeah, the, the space exploration. E. It It is less time grindy to beat the game versus the mod pack of the same name. It's about, from what I heard, it was, uh, from what I was reading, um, uh, it's about 60 to 140 hours, um, depending on how good you are at Factorio, to kind of, uh, beat the mod pack. Which is also very reasonable, because I have a, I have a hundred, I have a 285 hour playthrough of Space Age, the mod pack. Yeah, I started that and kind of, it got to a point where actually getting to space just felt more tedious than actually enjoyable, and I fell off, and so now I'm just kind of waiting for, it's already been tedious as hell, but now it's just getting more and more and more tedious and Super lost tedious. the fun for me. I, I also beat I also um, beat the state oh no. I also beat C block as well. Well I was at it, so yeah, that was also a uh, thing. Worked on for quite a bit. But that was a co op game. I was with a friend doing that. Say the cute. Eep. Beta is EP. Speaking of EP, I go to bed now. Sleep oh, well. No, Thanks for hanging out. out. Hopefully Rocky. you'll be on time for Barrow Trauma next time so we don't uh, get absolutely murdered like that. <laughs> well, maybe I should show up because that means you get content. Air Trauma, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, good night. <laughs> good night. You know, the amount of packs that are actually being sold is really small for this being a cart shop. Also, Raijin. Rai. Zam. Wow. Zam. Wow. 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 Smoochies. Two weeks. I'm confusion. Oh, oh Raijin's coming to visit. Oh, very nice. Yeah. Well, two weeks and like 18 hours, but who's counting? Certainly not me, haha. Ha. ha.
Olá, <risos> boa. Well, sure, light paw, but it's also like the entire game is just the, the game is TCG card shop. And I'm selling far more accessories to the card game than I am the actual card game. Case in point, this guy buying three copies of the same plush. I definitely sell a lot of single cards. That's probably where most of my money is made, actually. Yeah, that was something that I added to the list for things that my shop, my shop game would sell, is uh, concessions, you know. Because every card shop I've ever seen has sodas and candy and other snacks. Yep. Because when people are there for hours playing games, they get hungry, they get thirsty. They are going to buy those from the most convenient location possible. Well, they're already in your store. <laughs> hey there, Devin. That means they'll use DoorDash. Oh god, DoorDash. Well, Uber is in the news, not for a good reason, but... When are they, they ever in the news good. for good news? All well, Uber is now just the latest company to try the... Oh, you uh, signed this application and it... it I can you know, put those in there. Sorry, just realized something really awesome. No problem. That you're here? No, that you're here. Look at this. Raijin thinks he's old with the cute beard. Ooh. Well, it was more uh, wise old sage helping Rex with La Mulana, but then Rex fell asleep. Yeah, so um, I drew it based on Elder Zelpud from the game. Um, and interesting thing about Zelpud is Zelpud's name backwards is Duplex, and Duplex is one of the online handles for one of the developers of La Milana, hence YDR. Um, and, you know, I was anticipating La Milana today. So, you know what? What do you know? Back policy. Got an attack of the Eeps. Well, that's true, Light Paw, but most stores now, especially game stores, it's they, they want to sell their stuff at their markup. Like, outside stuff is, you know, that's a sale they don't get. And then it reminds people, oh, I could get this over there for cheaper than what you're selling in here, but I'm paying for the convenience. why now we've got the corner store near me you know uh, taking part of the store to put in their beer and liquor sales because oh now you can buy booze at the corner store yeah.
A little inconvenient having to do it this way, but hey, at least I can do it. And this way I can let my uh, employee actually restock these for me. Boy, I say boy, pick me an olive and restock these junk cards. Oh, I don't have enough. Oh crap, that is not where I wanted that. Hey, both of them bought some more stuff. And you bought that uh, card at quite the markup. Ooh. I already have that light paw. It's a Tupperware container. We'll put that out there. I love them too, light paw. But not at what they're trying to charge for them. I'm going to go ahead and open all these. Whatever works, Lucy. Whatever works. The Chinese food restaurant after almost two year absence and just bought a thing of chicken fried rice for supper because I was craving rice. Selling them up here for anywhere from a dollar fifty to four bucks a piece, light paw, and I'm like, it's basic land. Like, you know, back in my day, stores threw land at you because they just did not want to have boxes of it sitting in the store. I mean, if this card game had lands, they would definitely be going. They would. Pretty much all be going into those uh, bulk boxes. When I was uh, yeah. when I was trying to do tabletop game on a budget, I had basically tried to figure out how to be as budget friendly as possible to run like in person games. Um, so what I did is I bought a hundred of these um, card stands for like. I think it was like $20, maybe $10 on Amazon. And then I went to eBay and bought two, it was like 2,000 Magic the Gathering cards for $20. And then I just separated it into like scenes, creatures, equipment, or things like that, and just used the card art of the Magic the Gathering cards for the actual tokens. Because That's the card clever. art was just. Yeah, because it was literally like. It was literally like 2,000 gonna put unique cards for twenty dollars and I'm like I can just make these as stands and it's high quality artwork and it's varied by drastic amounts and it's already mostly fantasy to begin with. And people like it. Yeah, I suppose Whenever I should probably get my <laughs> Probably get my employee back to restocking. So I'll open this hand of packs and then uh, end day. You can tell this is not a uh, real magic store because there's no mi well used microwave hiding in the corner for the manager to cook his pizzas and pizza pockets. Light ball, I'm gonna say, uh... Well, first off, you cannot send links in the chat. Period. 
Uh, that's just something that is disabled on Twitch's end. For my channel. For some nice cards. But of course, I've got Raijin here. Raijin is whack. Whoa! Raijin is lucky charm. A dollar and four cents. We're gonna be rich. Cause that's worthwhile. God. The funny thing is, and it, it is kind of skewed because you do see cards worth hundreds of dollars. But when I was doing my Steam trading card shenanigans, I was very excited about cards worth over a dollar. Because those had very good margins. Well, yeah. But for me, I'm just going woo with this game because it's like, hooray, I'm never going to sell this. No, Because it's I not worth it to put out. I, I do think it's kind of funny, though. Because my experience with that has been like, ooh. That is several quarters of return instead of just a penny of return. Steam trading cards are kind of funky though because you can move a whole lot of cards very quickly because there are a lot of people buying hundreds of cards. Yeah. I know every Thanks now and then I there, every now and then I throw ten bucks into my Steam wallet and go buy cards I'm missing just for the achievements. <laughs> it's like every couple of every couple of months. I used to do that for games that I cared about. Um, and I got to a decent level that way, uh, but I kind of stopped caring because there was a uh, Steam event I missed where uh, some people just like got an absolutely ridiculous amount of Steam EXP. It was like one of the summer events that I just didn't really have much internet access for. And it kind of ruined the whole thing. It's like, well, I missed out on all this free experience. Why am I going to spend money on cards for little tiddly bits? Some of them will give you chat emotes, but I don't know a single person who actually uses Steam chat. I know there's one that comes to the stream that does. I think it's just like, I mean, I feel like they could work it like better, but like the Steam chats have always just been really weird for me. Before Discord, I actually used Steam Chat for quite a bit. Um, my main problem with it was simply that it didn't have a good access to chat history. So, yeah. like, I'd try and look up something that I was talking about literally just yesterday, and it was already gone. I'm like, really, Steam? Come on. Yeah, that's the main reason I have to essentially not use it, because that is that was my issue, was, like, I need chat history. Because if people message me and I don't have a chat history, there's like a 50% chance I might completely forget who they are without their chat history. Yeah, I'm kind of the same way there. Ooh! Hey. 
Yo. Well, I now there have a go. new highest value card. You're welcome, Zen. Mwah. <laughs> Mwah. Unfortunately, I will never sell it because I doubt I'll get another copy. <laughs> but hey, $2,000 card! Obtained a full art foil card. Cool. Got an achievement for that one. Achievement. Hey, Vari. Hey, Defend. I'll be jumping out of chat to give my ears a rest, but I'll still be watching and chatting and streams him. Okay. And remember, you're all cute. Bell Bell. Oh, those haven't been restocked yet. Okay. I guess I'll help my employee out. Want some good payouts here. If nothing else, I at least have a bunch of bulk boxes to throw out. Like, even the game realizes that cards under $10 are not worth it. They don't even pause the scroll of the cards for anything under $10. And we, yet we don't have a way to move those cards.
Yeah, things are just getting hotter and hotter across the world that right now. It sucks. Sorry, my bad. I'll turn down the bright and warm personality. <laughs> Okay, let's redo pricing. Because things change in price daily on this game for some reason. What, you thought you were the only card shop in town? No, but having to manually go and reset all of my prices every day. That is what we consider uh, tedium rather than fun. You don't want to know what I do every day at first time. Fair enough. All right, I'm, I'm in a decent spot now. Uh, do you want me to talk about the, uh, the tablet thing I was mentioning earlier to you that you were confused about? Because there's a bit of a story to it. Oh, the pen pressure? Go for it. Yeah. So it, it's, it's kind of straightforward, but also kind of not. Um, for a little bit of uh, explanation, I have like a, a tablet... My, my tablet is like a weird Chinese knockoff brand. So, um, it seems pretty decent for the most part. Like, clearly I've been able to actually operate with it. Um, so some of this is probably going to sound a little bit like whining, but it, it's still given me a lot of problems. And it's been very difficult for me to identify when the problems are me and my lack of skill as an artist versus the equipment actually being cheap, crappy Chinese um, instead of, you know, something decent in quality. Um, one of these has been a uh, pin pressure, and another thing has been uh, the parallax. So on a tablet, there's always parallax, no matter how good your tablet is. Even if it's the latest iPad, there's going to be a little bit of parallax. And what that means is where your pin is hovering over the screen, and where the cursor is actually registering are completely different. Um, it's pretty bad. There's like almost an inch of parallax on my screen now. And what's interesting about this, I don't know if you remember, but many months ago, I was talking about, I, I brought up at some point that I flipped my tablet around uh, to move the wires around. And I had to do this because I was reorganizing my desk to get a more comfortable position for drawing. I had to flip it around. And because of that, even though I recalibrated it and tried several times to fix it, my parallax got substantially worse. Um, there was almost like an inch between my cursor and my pen. It felt like. uh, I think I got it slightly better, but I also got used to it. So... Um, that one for certain I can blame on it being not high quality. Don't they have like a, uh, don't they have a, what is it called? Like a calibration option? 
yeah, they do have calibration, and I went through that several times, and every time it got worse. So, ah. I don't know. Like, there's, there's just been nightmares with this tablet, and in a way, there's nightmares with every tablet. Um, there's kind of a funny thing where if you have a tablet, you're just going to have driver issues. Um, and in fact, the main reason why I use a Mac instead of a Windows machine right now is because on Mac, my tablet actually works. Whereas on a Windows machine, for me to be able to draw on my tablet, after every reboot, I have to reinstall the drivers completely. Which is funny because reinstalling the drivers means my computer needs to reboot. So I get stuck in this loop of having to reboot and reboot. reboot and reinstall uh, the drivers over and over and over until finally it just magically works and then I just leave my computer on for as long as possible until something happens and it forces a restart and then I do this again. That's what that's what it was like back when I was on Linux. It was awesome. To be fair, that's kind of how I am with my stuff. So it's more, I don't have to reinstall things, it's more just having to bring all of the different software I use for streaming back up. I try to keep my PC on as long as possible. Until it's like, yeah, like ah, so now my audio is glitching out every uh, couple uh, minutes. Uh, yep, let's uh, restart. Yeah. It's it's frustrating. Um, but I blame, I blame Windows on that. It, it's... Unfortunately, I am using Mac specifically because Windows just gives me problems with uh, tablet drivers. Um, but anyway, uh, so uh, another thing that goes on with these tablets is uh, the way it works is for most of your uh, tablets, there's a little plastic bit called the pen nib. And what that does is when you press that against the screen, it presses against a uh, sensitivity um, input to create an electronic signal that it sends to the tablet device. And the pressure that you press against it emulates roughly how hard you're pressing, you know, the device down. That's how it determines, you know, that's how you get your pressure sensitivity curve. That's how you get like between thick and thin lines, um, all that fun stuff. It's also relatively fragile. So like dropping, your pen can very easily break that. So you want to be very careful with your tablet pens. Um, I think they've gotten a little bit sturdier in recent years, but earlier versions were really fragile. But um, when I was first starting out with art, I could not, for the life of me, get the full pressure sensitivity curve. I could not press hard enough down with my pen to actually get all the way. Um, so what I did was I, I adjusted the uh, pressure sensitivity uh, pressure sensitivity curve within uh, Clip Studio Paint to um, accelerate the pressure multiplicatively, um, and it worked better for me. Uh, fast forward two years, um, I have finally worn that pin nib down, and I replaced the pin nib. And this was a few months ago. I replaced the pin nib and got a new pin. And things were weird, and things were off. But I just kind of ignored it, and I got used to it. Because that's sort of what you do whenever something changes with your uh, your stuff. You just, eh, whatever, it's something new, you got to get used to it. You got to break it up. Yeah. Um, then, a few days ago, I watched a video. Um, I don't even remember what it was about. But the dude just uh, threw in a, a, a quick little thing about... Um, the importance of checking your pressure sensitivity curve within your applications to make sure that it's set appropriately. And I was like, hmm, I haven't done that in like years. I should check to see what it's looking like, right? So I open it in Clip Studio Paint. And the way Clip Studio Paint works is um, it'll automatically create a pressure sensitivity curve based on the way you're drawing lines with your tool. Um, it's actually very nifty the way they do it, and it's pretty accurate. Uh, but I opened the sensitivity curve, and without even looking at what the graph used to be, I just went ahead and drew a line and changed the sensitivity curve. And it changed it so dramatically, I don't know how to draw it. 
I'm serious. It's, oh. It was a massive change. And it took me a little bit to figure out what happened. I think what happened is the pen nib that came with my pen, the stock pen nib, was it was either put in incorrectly or it was not very good or something like that. And I got used to this shoddy uh, pressure curve. And then when I replaced the pen nib, without even realizing it, I lost a lot of pressure sensitivity because the... Okay, thank you. Uh, I, I lost a whole lot of pressure sensitivity curve because my new pen nib was actually able to get that full range. And I was accelerating past it very rapidly. So I was missing a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of depth in my lines. And now it's changed. Now it's different. And it feels weird. <laughs> Well, I really hope you get used to it soon. Digital art, everyone. The hoops we jump through. Yep. The things we do for an undo button. To be fair, that undo button is probably worth all of that. Oh, 100%. <laughs> I mean, on, eh, I, I've gotten to the point where the only reason why I haven't given up digital art entirely is because dealing with actual oil paints is incredibly impractical. It's incredibly what? Impractical. It's expensive. Ah. It's messy. It's toxic. You have to have good ventilation. Good night, Dunbrine. Anyway, that's my story. I hope you enjoy. Yes. And also I, I, ch I changed it. I changed it this morning. Right? Like I had immediate regrets because it was that big of a change. Also, Shadow Wolf, it's not cooking that you're hearing. It is. Uh... He's at work. Ah, uh, sorry. I I was trying to mute when there were big points. I don't know how much was coming through. Quite a bit, but it's all right. Stinker has made it past. This the cannot be allowed. Thank you, kind sir, for buying out all that stuff. <laughs> also, I seriously have no idea what this uh, dissatisfied customer scale is. I just know that I keep having dissatisfied customers. I don't know why.
Thank you. Come again. The streamer went around and experimented with that and determined the unsatisfied customers were from them waiting at the cash register. Oh, is that what it is? Well, then I guess I have to get another cash register up and running. But first, I need the excess funds to do so. Because I don't think that I can really fit a cash register in here. I think I need to, uh... Get a actual, uh... I think I need to expand my shop more before I can do that. Which is going to be a very expensive endeavor. I mean, aren't all things? Yeah, yeah. Well, it would be useful if the customers weren't, you know, coming in all in one batch. It's like I have moments where I will go quite a while without a customer, and then just suddenly I've got five of them in the line. But they're all, they're all on their lunch break. Yeah. Doesn't mean I have to like it. Like right now. I'm sitting here and it's like nobody's here. Nobody's waiting to check out at all. And I'll get a little bit of trickle. But then I'll just get a flood. I do have plans for how I'm going to revamp my store when I uh, do get another cashier, though. For starters, these singles, I'm thinking of making a counter that includes the cashier. Just so it feels a little bit more, you know, realistic. Exact change. Thank you much. 
Always nice when that happens. Sir, this is my counter. Stop going behind it. Grr. Meanwhile, they're like, haha, can't stop, won't stop. If I had my way, I could, I would absolutely stop them. You should have, you should have, in your game, you should have a fly swatter. Just be like, nah, smack. <laughs> Get out of there. Make me smack. People that just walk through each other. Let's see, how much is it? 1900, 2100, 2500. Oh, yeah. This expansion is going to be expensive. But there's the first. A lot of these games just have such slow progress on being able to advance. I understand why. Gotta pad out that content after all, but... It's like, come on, just let me be able to get this expanded. is out. I'll be with you in a moment. Ah. You have been cleansed, stinky. So this day is finished. Anybody sitting by themselves at a table? Ooh. 
selling all the stuff. And you are definitely stocking up there. I think for a bit I may, uh... I'm trying to save up to expand my shop. I'm only going to be worrying about having one box of supply for each product. Just because I would like to get that expansion done faster rather than... Or sooner rather than later. Alright, you all. You get to continue playing in the dark. I'll start opening packs. Kind of got nothing better to do. Ooh, $67. Oh, and that's a duplicate. Yes. $174. Oh, but that one's new. What's up, Meathy? Oh, you reset it? All right, I got plenty of other routes for you to go. After all, you guys are very much encouraged to TF me constantly. Hint, hint, nudge, nudge. Poke, poke. $63 card, sweet! Hoping for more valuable cards.
This doesn't look like my employee's in yet, so I'll just keep opening packs. Honestly, I have no idea to limit it. I was just, uh, I was actually just thinking it'd be kind of neat to have a, uh, statistic of how much each of these packs have cost me that I've opened versus how much I've actually earned from selling cards. Sleep well, Light Paw. Uh, I do know that they plan to put in actual gameplay, you know, where you can make the cards. Or play the card game. How much are the packs worth? Uh, depends on the pack. I'm fairly certain overall I have made a profit off of them. But I'm also not 100% certain. Yes, they are working on that as well, Kairu. I think this is where I part for the evening, so you beans have a lovely evening. You oh. as well. Thanks for hanging out. Sleep well. My pleasure. Good night. That's my pack opening for the day. Let's reset pricing. Got to wait for our employee to actually finish stocking everything. Because he is definitely not keeping up with demand.
But I think he does actually restock these bulk boxes, so that's nice. Rex has awakened from his slumber. Yeah, so sweet. What time is it? 2 a.m. Oh. I mean, I was planning to do uh, another two hours if you want to get two hours of Long Milana in, but. Not sure it'd be worth it to do a stream for that. Yeah. I can jump on and, like, virtual it or something. Just chill in voice chat. Alright. Two hours? Yeah, I was gonna switch over to Pixel Piracy and do that for a bit. Also, is that snack still on the table? I can make you a snack real quick. It would be appreciated. I was regretting not accepting earlier. Hey there, Spooky. Seriously, not worth putting out here on stands. It is my one and only biggest gripe with this game. I know I keep bringing it up, but it is a big gripe. I would r so much rather sell several of these tables and just have a binder that people can just buy from. one's been out there for a bit and it's at market price so I don't know what the I can do to move it or entice people to buy it you know Yeah, it is a suggestion for the devs, but if they haven't had it suggested to them yet, I would be beyond shocked. But it really is just so much money being left here on the table in a shop where we're trying to get things, you know, going. Put one of 
these out. Bada boom. Bada bing. Bada raging cute. Wow. Wah! Is my worker done yet? No. No, he is not. Ugh. Well, I guess since I have to buy these in a different means... I can at least stock up on these right now. And get a uh, new product. Fine! I'll just go put this on the shelf, I guess. I'll let you worry about it. I'm not sure there, uh, Kairu. But supposedly this is a real game available. I guess I could see that, Kairu. The devs behind those games are definitely furry adjacent, at the least. But either way, that is going to be it for this game, everybody. Thank you all so much for joining us today for TCG Card Shop Simulator. Check out our website, zgfgaming.com. We've got links for our Discord, Telegram, Mastodon, Blue Sky, Patreon, and more. They are on the website as well as down in the description below through our link tree. Thank you to my patrons, tippers, and subscribers. 
It is your support that keeps this channel alive and going. I cannot do this without your guys' help and your support, so thank you. Consider becoming a patron over at patreon.com slash zgfgaming. It's one of the best ways to support the channel, though you can also do so by sharing the stream around. As well as picking up packs of cards to stream loots using our Humble Bundle Partner link, or by picking up merch over at zgfgaming.store. But for now, thank you all so very much for joining, and I bid you all the most fondest, a duke. Well, bye. Well, well.